If you're a Chicagoan, then you've heard of the renaming of Lakeshore Drive, now known as Jean Baptiste Point du Sable Lakeshore Drive. But some may ask, who is Jean Baptiste Point du Sable, and what was his significance to Chicago? He was uh, Chicago's first settler. He was Chicago's uh, first city administrator. He was Chicago's first business entrepreneur. He was the first real estate developer. And he was uh, a proponent uh, of multiculturalism. That's right. Many consider DuSable a black man, the founder of Chicago. Although some scholars debate his origins, most agree that DuSable was born to a French father and a black African slave mother in present day Haiti, according to the DuSable Heritage Association. But not much is known about this founder. I think his uh, most important uh, contribution was really uh, learning uh, to peacefully coexist with the indigenous tribes, uh, marrying into the Potawatomi, a woman named Kitty Waha, uh, who was uh, married into the Catholic faith and became known as Catherine. As Julius Jones, wife. assistant so curator of the Chicago History Museum, says Dusable was a successful tradesman. And one of his biggest assets was his neutrality with the indigenous people, the British people, and the Americans during and after the Revolutionary War. His other biggest asset was the location of his business, which was on the north bank of the Chicago River, where Edser Kontov, president of the DuSable Heritage Association, says the Apple Store is now located. While other settlers, they had come before him, you know, they looked it over and said, no, this is not a place to settle, it's not a place to live. But for him, it was the perfect location, strategically located, good for economics, good for uh, his, 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 his settlement, and then, and, and then the story went there. He really, in a lot of ways, was the first non-Indigenous person to see the economic potential of Chicago. Politics was not something that he was much interested in, and, and, uh, and uh, so he kept that neutrality. Up until politics found him. He's actually arrested by the British for being thought of as an American patriot sympathizer. However, he's able to successfully um, beat the charges as it were and be successful and prosper um, negotiating all of these various uh, communities and identities that existed. And some say DuSable's wife, Kiti Hawa, a woman from a prominent Potawatomi family, was responsible for his release and contributed to his success. And he was captured for those two years. Not only did she sustain that settlement, but she demanded his release and sent three bands of Ojibwe to demand his release, which he was released. That speaks to her power alone. The couple met in what is now known as Peoria before moving to Chicago. They had two children. In his later life, DuSable sold his property in Chicago, which was later owned by John Kinsey. And according to the DuSable Heritage Association, the founder ultimately retired in Missouri. The more you know. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.